Hey, what's up Ecom Empires, Nick here, and I'm making a video today. I have my whiteboard out. Uh, it's not actually hanging up on the wall. I just moved into this apartment, but I wanted to get the whiteboard out and just go over a few things. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've done like a new type of training on Facebook ads or anything like that. And a lot of times I do the screencast record videos, but for this one, uh, I really wanna talk about some of the new conversion objectives and the learning phase and optimization of Facebook ads. And I thought that using the whiteboard is a really good way that I could draw some of this out and kind of go over some of these new processes that I know people are curious about, wondering about how does it affect my ads? How does it affect testing? You know, these types of things. And so I find this information to be the most important a lot of times for new people getting into the group. And so I just want to walk through this uh, and kind of start with, you know, when you're looking at your ads and you're getting ready to test ads, so you have a new ad, right? Uh, and when you start testing ads, Facebook now has something called the learning phase, right? All right, now this is actually not new. It's new in the sense that we can see it now. Facebook is letting us know, hey, your ad is in the learning phase, but it's not new in the sense that uh, it's not, it's always been part of the algorithm, right? Facebook, when you have, when you have your ad, and your ad is going to start getting served to people, here's basically what the learning phase means, right? You have uh, your audience, okay? So this is why targeting is so important because when you go to whatever product you have, remember everything, everything in e-commerce comes down to your product to audience match. Okay, so when you're looking at this ad right here, this ad is all about product to audience match. That's everything, that's your most important job before you run an ad is doing the research to find a good product that matches an audience, all right? And we've talked about that. Uh, we've talked about points that you can focus on in your offer and things that you can choose. And maybe I'll circle back to this at the end. But right now I wanna talk about what happens when you set this ad up and it's going through the learning phase, right? You have your audience that you picked with Facebook. So Okay, so you have the audience that you selected when you went through and you started doing your targeting. So based on whatever your product audience matches here, you take that audience and that's what you're using in your targeting. Now, Facebook is going in the learning phase. What Facebook is going to do is whatever, you know, these brackets that you're giving it, basically out of the entire Facebook, you know, billions of people, you're giving it a bracket of people to look at right here based on the targeting that you did. So Facebook, now depending on how large your audience is or how targeted or how good a product the audience match is all gonna kind of affect the learning phase, right? Because now what Facebook has to do is it has to take the, the targeting that you gave it and it has to go start looking for those people within that audience that it thinks are going to convert based on your objective here. So another thing that's really important here is whatever your conversion objective is, right? We're talking about conversions. The learning phase matters for conversions. So uh, whatever your conversion objective is, is also going to feed into the learning phase as Facebook goes out with its algorithm and tries to find the people that convert, okay? Now, an important principle, number one, okay? One of the first principles that we need to understand here is when it comes to finding conversions, okay? Facebook is always going to go out and try to find the cheapest conversions first, all right? Regardless of whatever your bid is. So whether you're spending you know, $5 a day here, all the way up to anything. It doesn't matter, $100 a day, we're talking about testing, right? So whether you're spending $5 a day all the way up to $100 a day, when you go out here, Facebook is always gonna find the cheapest conversions based on your bid to audience, okay? Cheapest conversions, because what Facebook does is this is, so it has a 24 hour every day, right? 24 hour period every day based on your time zone. So what it's going to do is at the beginning of that 24 hours, it's going to look at whatever your budget is right here. And it's going to determine how many conversions it should go out and try to find 
that day based on your budget. And then it resets every 24 hours, which is why a lot of times you hear starting your uh, ads or you know at the 12 a.m. mark can be the best because that's at the beginning of the 24 hour period. And so Facebook resets and gets a chance to go and try to find how many of the cheapest conversions can I get for this budget with this audience in this 24 hour period, okay? So it's always gonna go out and try to find those cheap conversions and it's always gonna do it based on your 24 hour period. Now, what happens from there is the learning phase is going to keep going until you get enough conversions based on your objective right here, right? So if your conversion objective is purchase, uh, and you're spending the money, then what Facebook has told us now is it needs 50 conversions a week, right? So the next stage of all of this is basically optimization. For the learning phase to end, you need to get to optimization. This is what marks, I hate when that happens. This is what marks the end of the learning phase, okay? So this ends when you hit this right here. And this requires, this requires 50 conversions based on your objective here. So whatever this objective is, is purchase and you got to get 50 purchase conversions. All right. And now that Facebook at that, if you do this within 50 conversions within one week, all right, that marks Facebook as optimized now and so your ad set is now optimized for being able to scale for being able to basically here's what happens when you get optimized and your conversions are optimized there's two things that are going to happen okay uh, number one is it's going to allow you to be able to scale and number two what's going to happen is that you're going to normalize right basically so during the learning phase you can expect some fluctuation in your cost per purchase or your cost per action whatever your objective is here that you're trying to go off of cost per lead so you know you're you're going to have some fluctuation here while it's in the learning phase there's going to be a little bit of this trying to figure out as facebook goes through and looks for your audience but once you get to here and you're optimized, you should get a much more level thing, okay? So you should be ready for scale at this point because you're getting enough conversions in a week for Facebook to understand exactly who your audience is. And at the same time, your, um, we'll call it your CPA because I don't know what your, your objective is here, right? So your cost per action here should normalize right it should it should be able to go down that way you can start scaling because obviously the as you scale into a larger audience this is naturally going to go up because of audience burnout but in the beginning you should be looking for that cost per action to normalize or drop a little bit at a certain level for your cpm to maybe drop a little bit once you're optimized and facebook knows exactly who it's going after so this is this is what is going on now with the learning phase. So here's what happens, right? Now this brings up some questions. What happens, uh, first of all, with the conversion attribution window, right? Because when we, when we look at this, another thing that affects this is the conversion attribution window. Sorry, this marker's dying. So conversion attribution window. Basically, there's two, the two that really matter, in my opinion. There's the one-day click, and then there's the seven-day click or view, right? It's the one-day click, one-day view. Seven-day click, one-day view are usually the ones that I'm looking at. Okay, so here's what this means, basically. If you set, I think most times with retargeting and stuff, unless you're running bigger budgets. If you're running smaller budgets, you probably want to be here because what these mean, these are conversion attribution windows, right? Windows is like the oper operable word here because what happens is this is giving you, <coughs> excuse me, this is giving you a window on which to optimize in the learning phase, right? So understanding this, it looks at this, okay? When you look at a one day click, that means once somebody clicks your ad one day after, okay? Once somebody clicks your ad one day after, Facebook is using this time period for your conversion attribution window. So basically, that would mean if you're setting it like this, within this time period here is where you're getting your 50 conversions, right? 
And that's how you're telling Facebook to optimize based on those 50 conversions you're getting within the one day click window. Here, if it's a seven day click, then basically after the click, you have seven days for the 50 conversions window. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? So the way I look at it is, like, what is your natural sales cycle going to be? Well, most of our sales, a lot of times, we all know there's a big drop-off rate from when people are going, right? People are going add the store, so they're going add the product page, and then to checkout, okay? And so we know already that even on a really great store, you might be getting, maybe on a fantastic store, you could be getting at the highest, oh, I, let's just say, like fantastic would be a 10% checkout conversion rate. That's, that's fantastic, right? And that's a really big number. Most people are hovering down around maybe one to 2%. Okay, but either way, there's a massive drop off here of abandoned carts. So, you know, if you're just going one day click, you better be driving enough front end traffic that your one to 2% here is getting you the 50 conversions that you need, right? So that all comes down to, we'll look at some numbers in a minute here, but that just comes down to numbers, right? If you're getting a conversion at $8, say your conversion for your cost per purchase, your conversion objective is purchase, and you're getting a conversion at $8, right? Well, what that means then, if you need 50 conversions, you know that 50 times eight is 400, right? So $400 a day is basically what you would be needing to spend to be getting enough uh, conversions here. But that's not even factoring in, okay, so that's factoring in 50 conversions is gonna cost you $400, right? At $8 a conversion, but then you need to figure out 50 conversions is only gonna be one to 2% of your traffic, right? So say 50, 50 conversions is 1% of your traffic. Let's just look at this, say 50 conversions, this is backwards algebra formula, right? So say 1% equals 50 conversions and you wanna figure out what that means for total traffic, right? So 1% 50 conversions, well, you just reverse it, basically. That means 50 is 1% of a total 100% number, right? So in order for that to make sense, you just add zeros. So 10% would be 500, and 100% would be 5,000. So that means you're getting 5,000 visitors a day to equal 1% conversion rate of 50 conversions to get your, you know, for, if that's what you're spending, right? So that would be what you would be kind of reverse engineering and figure out, okay, one day click window, if I've been running long enough to know I'm getting $8 cost per purchase and I need to get 50 conversions to optimize on this one day click, I know that I need to, and I'm only getting a 1% conversion rate on my store, I know that I need to be getting 5,000 visitors a day, right? And so how much are you spending cost per click to get those 5,000 visitors? Right, so like you want to make sure that it makes sense the whole way through because I mean your cost per click has got to be really low to make it work at that number, right? And to be able to drive that kind of traffic to get that kind of conversion rate. But of course then if you look at the seven day conversion window, right? Now you're looking at something a little bit different because if you're looking at seven days, now you don't necessarily have to be capitalizing just on you know, that only that 1% conversion on your store because you can be capitalizing on the retargeting and possibly email marketing that you're doing is bringing people back over a seven day period to increase your conversion rate and therefore less visitors um, to be able to get the same attribution in seven days. But again, that's gonna come down to how fast you wanna scale, how much money you wanna spend, how hard you wanna push. I hope that makes sense because that's just really kind of reverse engineering and looking at what these conversion attribution windows mean in terms of optimizing and scaling for the ads that you are running, all right? So when you're looking at optimization, the other question this brings up now is what if you're running an ad and over the course of that one week, you're running, so let's just say where most people are probably gonna fall, right? I do, you guys know that Ecom Empires to me is mostly about helping the people who are new, who are figuring it out, who are struggling, getting started, helping you understand exactly how it works, right? So for the seven day click is probably where most people wanna be at, unless you're already pushing big budgets, right? And so if you're running the seven day click conversion window on an ad, and you get to the end of a week, right? And you haven't hit your 50 conversions yet. 
So what does that mean? Well, it means that Facebook has not optimized then. If you got to the end of that week and you didn't get 50 conversions, right? You're, you're less than 50 conversions here, uh, which would be this sign, right? Less than 50 in the week. then you're not optimized, right? So what, what does this mean if, if this is where you fall into? Couple things, okay? Number one, it means the learning phase is gonna end, okay? So the learning phase is still going to be over either way. It's just either gonna be over in your favor or if this happens here, then what's going to happen basically is it's just going to restart the learning phase back here. So you're just going to fall back into the learning phase. It's going to restart at the end of that one week period because that's the given that Facebook has given us. It needs 50 conversions in a week to, you know, to do that. So what happens here if you didn't get that 50 conversions in a week? Well, you need to figure out what was it a matter of happening, right? Was it a matter of the budget? Okay, that could be the first thing. Maybe you got a lot of conversions, but you just didn't get the full 50, right? Maybe you got 30 conversions a week. Maybe you're only spending, let's say you're spending $10 a day, right? Which is $70 a week. And let's say you're getting conversions at $6 a cost per purchase, right? So 70 divided by six, I mean, that's really not even, I mean, it's almost 12, it's 11, right? So say you got 11 conversions on that, uh, on your budget. So that's even lower than I was saying. That's way lower than 50. That's only a fifth of the way there. But you're getting conversions at a profitable cost, right? So Facebook hasn't been able, this goes back to the micro ad set theory. I talked about this in my video. Facebook at five, even at $5 a day, right? Say you're running ahead at $5 a day and you're getting cost per purchase at $7. So you're only getting a purchase basically every other day. Um, and over the course of a week, you've spent $35 and you're getting it for seven, so you've had five conversions, right? That's still a good cost per conversion. No matter what your budget, remember, Facebook's gonna go out and try to find the cheapest conversions for you. However, the point being here is that you're not gonna be able to optimize for scale, right? And you're probably gonna have fluctuations in your cost per purchase if you keep running at that level because Facebook is not optimized where it needs to be here in the learning phase to be able to really hit direct with what you want to do. So what that means is you need to figure out where you need to be spending that, right? So you need to look at your cost per purchase and if it's profitable and if it's working, then what you do is you take your cost per purchase, like in that situation, for example, you're getting a cost per purchase of $7. And so what do you need to do to figure out 50 conversions a week to be able to optimize and scale and break through that learning phase. Well, if you're getting them for $7 and you need 50 conversions, then you just take the cost per purchase, right, times 50 conversions. And so in this case, it's $7 times 50. That means it's $350. That's what we need to be spending in a week to hit our 50 conversions goal. And so once we have this number here, we take it and we divide it by seven days, right? And this number is going to give you what you should be spending a day. So when you take that $7 cost per purchase times 50 is $350, right? Divided by seven days means that you're spending $50 a day to optimize where you need to optimize for being able to scale, right? It doesn't mean, look, there's, there's two different things here. It doesn't mean that you can't still test the way that you want to test in here, right? When it comes to your testing, you can, this is a big misconception here. People are like, oh, the death of the five to $10 ad set. Well, you can still test at five to $10 a day if you want to. It's just your, a couple things that we talked about, right? Like when you're testing and, and you're looking at testing, right? If you're testing at $5 a day, then at an average cost per purchase of $8, right? Which is, is kind of fairly standard across, you know, marketing $7, let's just say $7, right? So at an average cost of purchase of $7, you're not gonna be anywhere near your 50 conversions a week. That's just what you need to understand. At $5 a day times seven days, you're only spending $35 a week, right? You're spending $35 a week. So the only way you get 50 conversions in a week 
on a winning ad, right? Again, this is this is still testing. We're not even assuming winners yet. But the only way on a winning ad that you would even get that is if you took thirty divided thirty-five divided by fifty, which is going to be less than one, right? It's it's going to be. Oh no, it's going to be. It would be one point something. It would be really low though. Basically, you'd be getting conversions for like a dollar, right, or less. It would have to be less than a dollar, right? So it would be conversions of like seventy cents. So anyway, so you just need to understand that that's your feedback loop, right? The amount of time it's going to take for you to get the feedback is a whole week. But even in a whole week, your feedback may only be like five to seven conversions, five to ten conversions would be good. And so you're not going to be there yet. You're going to have to increase the budget just to be able to get to a feedback loop that's going to allow you to start seeing if you can reach this 50 conversions, right? Even at $10 a day times seven days, you're now at $70 a week, right? So we're getting better on a feedback loop here because we have more money that we're spending within a week to see what happens. But still, even this, right, you're, you're still going to need 50 divided by 70. You're still going to be getting super low conversions. I mean, you'd be getting conversions for like $1.25 at this point to be able to hit this number. So still then, really still not even practical, all right? So you just need to understand with testing, you can still test at these variables. It's just that you're testing to figure out what your average cost per purchase is here on your feedback loop to see what's my cost per purchase and then to determine what I need to raise my budget to to be able to fit Facebook's optimization and scale. All right. Now, another thing that could happen here, that's if you're getting conversions and your your ad is working, it's just not falling within the, the optimization phase of what Facebook needs. OK. If you're not getting conversions, your testing's not working and things are just like, it's just not working for you, then another thing to consider here, of course, is just changing the ad creative. Or like, these are things that you can consider um, based on an ad that's somewhat working, but just not quite there yet for you. All right, the ad creative or the targeting, right? Broader targeting. These are all things that just go back to the same thing of, is your product really winning, right? Are you getting, that's the biggest question, number one. Are you getting conversions and just not enough of them? Or are you really not even getting conversions, okay? Because then if you're really not even getting conversions, this becomes just a matter of your product, right? Your ad creative, your targeting, or, or something along those lines that you're not getting the conversions that you need. All right, now another thing that you could do though, is say you're getting the conversions um, or say you're getting convert, say you're getting really good traffic or you're getting conversions, but again, you're just not here and maybe you don't have the money or maybe you're not willing to take the risk to up your budget. Another thing you could try doing is changing the conversion objective. All right. So that's another thing because some conversion objectives are easier to hit than others, right? Like instead of purchase, maybe you test add to cart. And maybe the add to cart conversion, maybe you were getting purchases for $7, but you're getting add to carts for like $2. And so you can run a budget on add to carts and you can still be profitable and still set up your retargeting. And so like these are other ways that you can look at changing to try to fit the optimization window that Facebook is talking about. All right. So this is just some, some kind of, uh, kind of some basic math stuff that I wanted to go over and make sure that everybody in the group has a very clear understanding because there's been so many things like, oh, does you know the micro ad set theory still work? Yes, yes, of course, of course it still works because at the end of the day, what we're looking at here in the learning phase is no different. Facebook has always had the learning phase. It's always been there. Facebook's algorithm needs to learn within the windows it gives you based on its targeting to optimize. The difference is that the conversion window went up to 50 conversions within one week. It used to be 25. And the other thing is that now Facebook is letting you know where you are in the learning phase and letting you know exactly what you need to do to try to fit it. But at the end of the day, it still comes down to the same metrics that we're looking at, right? We're testing our ads the same way. We're testing products and we're looking for the winners based on things like your engagement, right? 
People talk about wanting low CPMs. If you want low CPMs, you want high engagement. High engagement equals low CPMs, right? So you're looking at your engagement that you're getting. You are also looking at um, your cost per click, right? I talked about I talk about this all the time. Your cost per click link is determining, you know, what type of audience you have. Are they interested in buying your product? Are they clicking? Are they going? Right? And because this gets you to your funnel, right? This gets you from, you know, you have ad, and then you have product page, and then you have add to cart, and then you have checkout, right? My marker is dying. But you know what I mean? So your cost per click, this is the first one. Are you getting clicks right here? And if you're getting clicks, then you work down the funnel and you keep working to make it profitable. But your cost per click is an important metric leading up to getting purchases. All right, so you're still looking at the same metrics like I talked about in the micro ad set theory. All that still holds up. And then once you're getting purchases, you're looking at your cost per purchase to your ROI and determining is this really profitable for me or not? Is it something that's in the scaling phase? Is it something that's in the learning phase? Is it something that I need to figure out and make more profitable, right? Do I need to increase my average order value? Do I need to increase my customer lifetime value? Like these are the types of things to help you figure out in your funnel, once you get to the purchase, do you have a profitable e-com funnel that you can keep running, right? Most people base it just off of front end money, right? My cost per purchase to my direct return on investment from running those ads. And that's something that you can absolutely do down the funnel to figure out if you're making money, right? And then once you get through the learning phase, if you're here in optimization and your cost per purchase on your conversions is bringing you back a profitable return on investment, like at three times or higher, usually in my opinion, then you're good to just keep scaling, right? And scale and scale and your cost per action should stay pretty steady as you scale, as long as you keep getting these 50 conversions a week based on your conversion objective here, right? So that's everything in this video. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I'm gonna try to continue putting some more of this stuff out. Uh, if this video gets a good reaction, I'll probably just put it right into the Facebook Masterclass because I think this is really important information in understanding what we're doing when we're testing. We're still testing the same, right? We're still testing based on the same metrics. It's just now we wanna understand our learning phase, our conversion objective, attribution window and then how all of that works for optimization and then you know once you optimize right that's when scaling takes over and looking at your cost per purchase to your ROI and knowing your numbers and other things that we've talked about so uh, thanks for watching use this definitely use this and understand this going into Q4 because when you are when you're looking to scale quickly you need to understand this part here how quickly are you getting to those conversions so if you're testing at the 5 10 15 dollars a day which most people are right then you just need to understand the process that you're still trying to get to to be able to optimize and scale right and that's really going to help you in Q4 with when you need to know your numbers and you need to understand your budgets and you know CPMs are going up because a lot of competition big marketers dumping in their budget but remember your CPM is just, uh, that's your, your paying for impressions, right? So your CPM on your ad definitely is an important metric because you're paying for impressions, but your conversion objective is what really matters. That's what Facebook is learning. That's what it's optimizing off of. And you can be profitable at a conversion objective regardless of what your CPM is. So this is like still your most important thing how are you, what, what is your cost per action, right? Your cost per action is still your most important thing because that's what you're optimizing and learning based off of and your cost per impressions is just how you're paying Facebook, right? So uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Hope you guys found this video valuable. Take this stuff, apply it. Hopefully everybody crushes it and does amazing in Q4 with their ads using this type of information. Talk to you later. Hustle hard, live free.